Hello. Am I starting this vlog off at 11.45 at night when I am fully ready for bed? Yes, I am. Today, I am starting off the first of my monthly reading vlogs, and we're starting it out with The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Before you get started, this is your warning. There will be spoilers in this video. If you guys want my spoiler-free thoughts, make sure to follow me on my TikTok, my Instagram, because I always post all of my thoughts on there that won't ruin the entire book for you. Before we get this started, we're taking off the uh, the dust jacket. If you read your hardcovers with the dust jacket on, I don't trust you. And no matter how desperate or dire, never pray, pray to, to the, the gods, gods that answer, that answer after, dark. after dark. This hasn't even really started and it's so beautifully written. Her freckles, one, two, three, four, five, six. Are you kidding? There's also seven in the chapter headers. This, these are the kinds of little things, the Easter eggs. Can you tell that I'm a Taylor Swift fan? <laughs> Darling, he said in his soft, rich way, I was the night itself. Now it is morning in another city. Another it's kind of hot, so weird. <laughs> Have I read too much enemies to lovers? Probably. Probably. I like that. What is a person if not the marks they leave behind? The cat, also named Toby, so I can talk to myself without it being weird, he explained, looks at her as she blows on her tea. I remember, says the darkness in her ear. She shakes her head, forcing the voice away. I thought it was gonna be the next day they forget. Nobody remembers her ever. How depressing. Okay, so we've made it to chapter 10. V.E. Schwab has some of the most beautiful writing I think I have ever read. I have a feeling that I'm gonna be tabbing a lot of quotes. I am enjoying this immensely. Lulu's tired of me having the lights on, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's not tomorrow. <laughs> it's been like two to three weeks since I filmed the last clip that you guys just saw. I get my head in the game, you know? Troy Bolton this shit. I am your daughter, she says again. Her father grimaces. We have no child. Okay, so I was a little confused at first about the fact that obviously they had this entire wedding planned and they were looking for her when she was running through the woods. I guess it just goes back to like how those people would be living their lives if she didn't exist. That is a horrible way to find out. I just got to the part where she goes to like a bar or club, whatever. Someone buys her a drink, he gets a call, so he leaves. And of course, he forgets who she is. The fact that she's grateful that he's gonna forget about her so he won't come back to make conversation just really speaks to the introvert in me, you know what I mean? I love that. <laughs> the part where she takes James's scarf from his apartment that feels like when you lose something where you like know you have it and you know it's somewhere but you have no idea where you put it. That would drive me insane. I hear his bookstore judging by the name and the windows brimming with stacked signs. Addie turns about to comment on the cat's name but loses her train of thought before the face comes into focus. She is certain it is, but it is not him. Of course it is not. I knew he was going to look like him. Black. A hand lands on her shoulder. You have to pay for that. She turns and there's the boy from the shop, a little breathless and very annoyed. This is the fun part. Also, I love that the cat's name is Book. So I was just downstairs listening to the audiobook while I was like doing things that I need to do. And this part's in Henry's point of view. So it says, B insists that everyone who works in a bookstore wants to be a writer, but Henry's never fancied himself a novelist. He can't find the words, the story, the voice. He's gonna tell Addie's story, right? She's gonna be the story and the voice. I have leftovers in the microwave downstairs. I just got really excited and ran up here to tell you. We're all the way back in 1714. So this is her first year in Paris. She's basically dying. No. They put dead bodies on top of her. Only then does her hand meet waxy skin. Only then do her fingers tangle in the strands of someone else's hair. That's horrific. It's a bony mound of a dead man's back. Nearby milky eyes stare up at her. Addie stumbles out of the cart and collapses to the ground, retching, sobbing, alive. I'd be crying too. No, the bird is gone. The last of her past life carried away with the dead. This is horrible, horrible. But I mean, writing? Phenomenal. Every time the shadow guy comes- This all happened because you were messing with the shadow man? Wait a minute. Give me what I want and the deal will be done. This misery ended. And then also when he says, you will be nothing, my dear, he says simply, but it is a kinder nothing than this. Surrender and I will set you free. Why is this attractive? It is now 1.06 in the morning. Addie is about to go back to the bookshop. Next time you try to return a book, don't return it to the same person you stole it from the first time. I remember you. Three words, large enough to tip the world. Amazing, incredible, never been done before. We're gonna go get coffee together. But he banter from the bookshop. I mean, that's fair. Can you imagine going from 300 years of no one remembering you and then all of a sudden there's a random white boy in a bookstore in New York is like, but when he looks at her, he knows her. She is certain he knows her. We love Henry. He's gonna buy her coffee. I can't sit here and drink alone. It makes me feel like an asshole. <gasps> oh, the bar's in hell. Oh, we're back to the past. I was enjoying Henry too much. 
Addie has discovered chocolate. It's really cool that she's showing like different things that happened throughout time period. This is the five year anniversary of when she made the deal with the Shadow Man and he's back but she's standing up to him more and I love that. It's given me a lot of like enemies to lovers vibes, but he's not human. She named the shadow and she made her little house. She was gonna like show him that he wasn't besting her and then he bested her. I knew he wasn't gonna show up on their six year anniversary, but it still hurt. They keep referring to Henry as like sunlight and warmth, which again, I think is significant because the darkness is the exact opposite. So it's actually the next day. I love the little pieces of art that they have before every part. I think that's a really nice touch. I like this Remy guy. Wait, okay, so she's going on her first date with Henry right now. They're walking into the speakeasy and it says, and the darkness smiles against her skin and draws her onto a floor to dance. And it is the beginning and the end of everything. Do they end up falling in love? Anyway, she just introduced herself to B. She just said that there's something timeless about Addie. If only she knew. When they said speakeasy, I definitely thought they meant like a club. He took her to an arcade. He brought quarters too? Oh, the bar's in hell. <laughs> Couple things. First off, the whole ending with Remy, how he pays her. <laughs> Couldn't be me. Going back to my whole her and Luke falling in love. Quote number one. They are on the bed and for an instant, only an instant, she is somewhere else, some when else, the darkness folding itself around her, a name whispered against bare skin. But to him, she was Adeline, only Adeline, his Adeline, my Adeline. And at first, I kind of brushed that off as like, okay, well, he's just being Luke, you know, possessive as he is. But then it says, he was not made for her the way Luke was. That means her and Luke slept together, right? When does that happen? Asking for a friend. <laughs> I'm confusion. Do we think that it's possible that Henry maybe might have made a deal with Luke? There has to be a reason why he remembers her. I mean, I guess I could just keep reading. So they're going on a date. Uh, he's gonna realize that people don't remember her. Henry's doing the exact same thing that Addie does. But Addie's beginning to realize how good Henry is at skirting lies while leaving truths half told. And it sounds like Luke burnt down a building. The fact that she saw Remy again, but now he's old, that hit different. Up until this point, we hadn't seen the effects of the people around her in terms of like years. So like we didn't see her parents get old and die. There was a, a specific quote that I liked. Most people have only one chance to make a first impression, but luckily Addie has by now had several. When you like create scenarios in your head and you're like, mm, I would say this instead. And then you like are able to switch it. Addie's able to do that, but like in real life. Robbie kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit. The fact that he was annoyed by Henry bringing someone new when he's the one that broke up with Henry. Wait a minute. Henry deflates. I know he says, but I can't love him back. Can't, not won't, not shouldn't. If he made a deal with Luke and he's not able to love someone because of it, that would be so sad. Anyway, she really just let that go. And now she's gonna have to explain to him why none of his friends remember who she is. Like, could they ever really be in a relationship if nobody that he cares about ever knows her? I spoke too soon. She just went to go visit her mom. Obviously the mom not remembering her, the fact that the dad is gone and that it ends with the door groans shut and Addie knows as she walks away, that she will never see her mother again. That's actually making me emotional. Oh, let's see how Henry reacts. And Henry's hand falls away from his face and he looks up at her, his green eyes fever bright and says, because I made one too. I knew it, I knew it. I don't know what his deal was yet. I'm gonna think about it tonight. Hello, <laughs> it's 1120, 1120. <sighs> I thought it was like 10. I've been kind of thinking about what Henry's deal could be. I know for sure it's not the same thing as Addie. Because he was talking about time running out, I feel like maybe that plays an aspect in it. He also said that he can't love Robbie. So I'm thinking maybe after the Tabitha rejected his proposal, he made a deal to never feel that kind of pain again. And maybe his punishment for that, kind of like Addie's is the fact that everybody forgets her, his is that he can never love again because that's the only thing that'll keep him from being hurt potentially open to love see when his first dog dies henry cries for a week <laughs> same when he finds liz cheating on him during their senior liz blink and you're halfway through school paralyzed by the idea that whatever you choose to do it means choosing not to do a hundred other i think about that all the time blink and you're 24 <laughs>
No future, only an interlude, and when it's over, your bank account is dry and you're not any closer to anything. Anyway, and the irony is hardly lost on you that in wanting to live, to learn, to find yourself, you've gotten lost. V.E. Schwab, ma'am? <laughs> It's too late for this. <laughs> Down on one knee with a ring in the middle of the park and Henry is such a fucking idiot because she said no. <gasps> champagne problem vibes, anybody? Except he's the one with the champagne problems, ironically. This part is from Henry's point of view and it says, Addie is so many things, thinks Henry, but she is not forgettable. How could anyone forget this girl when she takes up so much space? She fills the room with stories, with laughter, with warmth and light. And that description gives me the same vibes as she was like a shot of espresso. And I kind of love that for them. I've read a couple chapters. I also have a special guest. His deal went a little bit differently than I thought. Instead of it being just people who he wanted to love them to love him, it's literally everybody, which is interesting. I feel like I would hate that. And the fact that everybody's just like coming up to him now, hard pass for me. Also, he never clarified with Luke how long a lifetime is because lifetimes vary. That's a little sketchy. Obviously it's gonna be like when the clock goes around all the way. The ghost in the frame. Her thesis is gonna be about Addie. And even if she became a template, the fact is this template influenced centuries of art. She's a piece of connective tissue between eras. I love that. I love that so much. So he's been dating Vanessa for a week after Tabitha broke up with him. Well, first off, she just told him that she loves him. And now she's burning Tabitha's things in his kitchen. You're holding on to the past, she says, striking another match and tossing it into the box. Like literally holding on. You've had this box as long as we've been together. I've only known you a week. <laughs> Vanessa, he says, gritting his teeth. I need you to go. Like home? Like go. Henry, she says, touching his arm. What did I do wrong? Uh, everything? Well, now he has to find a new coffee shop. That is very uncomfortable. Basically, at this point, Henry's really sick of the fact that everybody's just in love with him all the time, which <laughs> can't relate. And, um, <laughs> sorry. Then it gets to the part where he meets Addie. She sees the truth and he doesn't know how or why, only knows that he doesn't want it to end. And now they are in, I don't remember what it's called, but they're in that like art exhibit place. They're in the last room and they're supposed to like make their mark in the room, which obviously Addie can't do. Put your hand over mine, he says, and she hesitates only a moment before pressing her palm to the back of his hand, ghosting her fingers over his own. There, he says, now we can draw. That's so sweet. This is how it starts, she says, and he begins to write. I knew it. I knew it. Ugh. And even though I was really in my momentum earlier, I'm tired now. It's 1.45. And look at the little baby. I hate being a mood reader. Yesterday I was so into it and I was stoked to finish it. And today I woke up and all I want to do is read Crescent City. And I just, we're going to do this. We're manifesting this, speaking it into existence. And I think this is the part about Luke and Addie. I'm hoping. He's showing Addie what a soul looks like. And it says, the light in Luke's hand is a marble, glassy and glowing with a faint internal light. And all I could think about was when they would marbleize Janet in The Good Place. <laughs> when she's in Paris and like the fighting is happening, all I could think about was Les Mis, first of all. And then Luke just like leaves her in Florence, which I mean, I was waiting for her to actually leave France. I also love the part where she's with Matteo and it's like the first time that an artist is inspired by her. My toxic trait is liking Luke because I know he's toxic. Do not mistake this, any of it, for kindness, Adeline. His eyes go bright with mischief. I simply want to be the one who breaks you. That's not supposed to be attractive. Holy crap. First, I think it's brilliant that she used Beethoven as like, he had also made a deal. That is the only way to think of it. The black hair rises from his face, climbing through the air like weeds, and his skin ripples and splits. And what spills out is not a man. It is a monster. It is a god. It is the night itself and something else, something she has never seen, something she cannot bear to look at, something older than the dark. And he showed her all of that because she accused him of also being lonely. You're taking book back home. Oh, that's so cute. And despite Henry's superstition, he does not turn to dust, severed from his store. He simply toddles around for an hour before leaning up against a philosophy stack and he is home. And so is she. So she just went back to visit her hometown and everything has changed, but I love that the tree stayed. Wait, I just had a thought. They keep mentioning time and how Addie says like, we have plenty of time. What if that's gonna be the plot twist because I have a lot of pages left? I know they keep hinting at the fact that Henry's gonna run out of time, but what if it's Addie 
First off, it's Henry's birthday. He's a rising star. I'm sure you've heard his name, but if you haven't, you will soon. Give it up for Toby Marsh, the guy from the beginning. His song is beautiful, and I'm so afraid, afraid that I'll forget her, even though I've only met her in my dreams. God, never getting closure like that sounds like it would suck. Henry seems to think that he's gonna have less than a year. I'm sad now because I think she is gonna go before Henry. We're on to part six. Also, <laughs> totally unrelated. I have baby carrots, right? What the heck is this? It also kind of looks like Dobby's fingers. I didn't like that. <laughs> I don't know V.E. Schwab's MO. I don't know her level of like plot twists and stuff. Okay, well Annie has to die, right? Cause she's been alive for more than 300 years. I feel like by that point, I'd be sick of it. I'd want to go. Let's get into this. This piece of original sheet music signed by singer songwriter Toby Marsh. I wish I could zoom in on this. We're back to 1914, July 20. Isn't that when she made the deal? Oh, <laughs> this is 200 years later. <laughs> so she comes home every 100 years, I guess? No, the tree isn't there. I'm sorry, he says, and it is the first time she's ever heard those words in that silken voice. The only time they will ever sound honest. They're gonna have a cute moment. Even rocks, she thinks as she follows Zuko away from the graveyard and the village and the past, she will never go back. I never would either. We keep having cute moments like these, it's gonna mess with my head. Toxic ass. I'm talking about myself. I can't do it. I can't do it. Luke lifts his glass. Happy anniversary, my Adeline. She looks at him, lips parting with their usual retort, but then stops short. If she is his, then by now he must be hers as well. Happy anniversary, my Luke, she answers, just to see the face he'll make. She is rewarded with a raised brow, the crooked upturn of his mouth, the green of his eyes shifting in surprise. Uh, I, I need help. I say as I give it a pink tab. <laughs> a week later, Addie caves and boards a ship for New York. By the time she docks, the world is already at war. Oh, I'm so dumb. <laughs> Listen, numbers do not stick with me. That's so embarrassing. Anyway, moving on. July 29th, 2014. Hey, it's not every day that your girlfriend turns 300. I love you too, she says. She wants it to be true. Miss LaRue, what does that mean? He's been so good to you. You're supposed to be better than me. We have relocated. So I just read the chapter where Addie is at the speakeasy. It's been 14 years since they've seen each other since Luke gave her the ring to call on him. I promise, Adeline, few are as maddening as you. How romantic. <laughs> My other favorite part from this chapter. His mouth hovers over her own, his voice dropping to nothing but a breeze. You belong to me. There is a sound like thunder in the back of his throat. With me. And then she just shoots him down. Which like, okay, I get it. Strong female. Yes, I love that for her. But also, why? <laughs> but she has had such a good day. She doesn't want to waste her night. Doesn't want to give it to him. He has taken enough. I mean, she's also lived for 300 years, but... Whatever. A smile tugs at the edge of his mouth, and then his green gaze slides toward Henry. I suppose I should be flattered by the resemblance. <laughs> How long do you have left? Henry swallows. A month? No! <laughs> I'm not ready to cry. Every time I read about Henry, I'm gonna cry. Henry looks tired, hollowed out. It's too late, he says. But it's not too late. Not yet. Oh my gosh. Addie, she'll give Luke her soul to let Henry live. Nah, because that would make me cry. I don't think I need that tonight. Those emerald eyes trail over her skin. So would I, he says, if you wanted it. Nah, 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 nah. I don't think he loves her. Is he capable of love even? But damn. Even if everyone you met remembered, Luke says, I would still know you best. She searches his face. Do I know you? He bows his head over hers. You were the only one who does. There, she says, feeling her way back to him. Now it is dark again. Luke laughs, a soft, beautiful sound, and pulls her down into the bed. If she doesn't want me to love him, then why? 430, I'm on, I have 30 pages left in this part. We, we got through the, the part with the, the fire where he gives her a home, which is beautiful, but then he takes it away from her. So fast forward to when they're fighting. I'm so mad at him. It's August 6th and she left on July 30th. He asks B if she can work the store, asks Robbie if he will feed the cat, and they say yes. As simple as that, because they do not know what is goodbye. Y'all, I'm about to lose it. This is the last gift she can give him, these moments he will never have. And this is the last gift he can give her, the listening. 
They teach you growing up that you are only one thing at a time. Angry, lonely, content, happy, free, confused, and lonely at the same time. Addie is guiding his face to hers. She is saying something and he doesn't want to listen. He's afraid it's a good pie. It is, just not what he thinks. You promised you would write it down. He doesn't understand. The journals are on the shelf. He has written her story, every part. I did, he says. I did. But Addie is shaking her head. Henry, I haven't told you how it ends. I knew it. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I am not one of them. Not anymore. And I am tired of losing. Tired of mourning everything I ever try to love. She reaches out to touch Luke's cheek. But I won't lose you. And you won't lose me. Natty feels his teeth skate across her bottom lip. The taste of copper blossom on her tongue. And she knows that it is done. Isn't that what they say at the beginning? Oh no, he says deal. Oh no, he said done. We love a full circle moment. I think this is... Addie flashes him a pitying look, because of course he cannot stop her. No one has ever been able to. You've given me so much, Henry, but I need you to do one more thing. I need you to remember. Promise, she whispers, and he is just lifting his hands to hold her against him, to promise. By the time his arms close around her, she is gone, and he is falling. <laughs> oh, that got me good. <laughs> I feel like I'm just gonna sit here and cry for a little bit. At least my mascara is waterproof. <laughs> Title of the piece, The Girl Who Go Away, it's the fucking photos. I'm just gonna be a sobbing mess for the rest of this video, so if you don't like that, then you just don't like me. <laughs> that was stupid, I'm sorry. Book looks over at the mound of the comforter, orange eyes wide and waiting. Book doesn't have to be alone. Red, blue, silver, black, white, green, six notebooks, all of them still there. She simply wants to live before she dies. It will take her years to learn the language of those eyes. She claws her way up and out, hands splayed across the bony mound of a dead man's back. I still hated that part so much. I think about it a lot. B slams the last page down on the coffee counter, startling the cat. You can't end it there. She's clutching the rest of the manuscript to her chest as if to shield it from him. The title page stares back at him. The invisible life of Addie LaRue. He wishes he could have lived with it a little longer, wishes he could have lived with her, but now he's glad to have it because the truth is he is already beginning to forget. He lies in bed at night and closes his eyes and tries to conjure her face. The exact curve of her mouth, the specific shade of her hair, the way the bedside lamp lit against her left cheekbone, her temple, her chin, the sound of her laughter late at night, her voice when she was on the edge of sleep. He knows these details are not as important as the ones in the book, but he still can't bear to lose them yet. I'm gonna have to take a break because that really hurts. <laughs> it's always the small things, you know? And you, they go, like, you, they're so easy to forget. I don't think my mascara is this waterproof. <laughs> yes, not. <laughs> And in the end, he'll sell the work on one condition, that there is only one name on the cover. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Miss Schwab, why? The various clerks bustle about dismantling old displays and putting up new ones, trying to finish their work before the mist outside turns to frost. She runs her fingers over the name, feels the embossed letters arc and curve beneath her touch as though she had written them herself. She peels back the cover, turns past the title to the dedication. <laughs> Fucking hell. Three small words rest in the center of the page. I remember you. And then Luke is there. She has had 300 years to study and she will make a masterpiece of his regret. <laughs> so Addie says nothing of the new game, the new rules, the new battle that's begun. She only smiles and sets the book back on its shelf and follows him out into the dark. <laughs> Damn. For a good portion of the story, I thought it would be four stars because I love the way that it was written, but it was very slow. I thought Addie was gonna give up her soul and that was gonna be like the exchange that she made. I love that she still has it. She's just playing his game. She never gets worn down by him and I love that. Henry, I just wanna give him a hug. I finished it. I'm proud of myself. 
So I guess that wraps it up for my first reading vlog of the year. But let me know what you guys think of this book because I would love to just be able to talk about it. If you made it this far, thank you. If you liked this, please make sure to give it a thumbs up because it was a lot of work and I just, it would be, it would be nice to be validated. If you want to see more reading vlogs throughout the year, more bookish content and also just normal vlogs, make sure to subscribe. I hope you guys all have a great day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!